time to give glory back to God. Amen. Give him the praise that he was due. Amen. Amen. So come on, let's stand up on our feet. Let's shake it off. Get ready to worship. Amen. Amen. There's no God like the Lord.
who can stand, they stand.
basically every month, the kids are being challenged to do all kinds of stuff. So in September, they were encouraged to destroy bathrooms. So throughout the city and throughout the nation, they've been ripping up toilets, spreading feces on the wall, all kinds of stuff. So in October, so it's October, so in October, the kids are being challenged to slap a staff member oh in school. November, kids someone else's girl. On December, death of all crash and uh, put feet. In January, you're told to gather a female. In February, you're being told to destroy school signs. March, you're encouraged to make a mess in the cafeteria or the court line. April, grab the private cars of a boy. May, skip school. June, uh, put off the front offices. And July, spray in the two. Please, parents, speak to your children about this. Monitor what they do on social media, but just to make sure that you know, because the stuff that's on this list is criminal, and they do go to jail. So I'm just asking you to please, so you're not aware of it, it's something that's going on throughout the nation, and please speak to your uh, children about it. Do that. Then we have a card here that says a warm and awful thank you, attention to express sincere appreciation for your special thoughtfulness, and this is coming from Sister Doris, Jesse. Uh, and family, they appreciate her salary uh, of everything that you've done uh, during that time of bereavement. This is the notices. Uh, we ask that you pray for the sick and shutting and the incarcerated grief. Oh, if there's anyone that's celebrating a birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. And this is our notices, and please have a blessed blessing. You too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Davis. Good morning, First Calvary family and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And all those who are listening in to us, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, or whatever social media platform you're using, we say good morning to all of you also. It is time to give in the house of the Lord. Amen. It is time to give Amen. in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Found in the book of Luke, the sixth chapter and the 38th verse, it says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Our God is an awesome God this morning, and he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Amen. We may not be where we are today without the provisions that come from God our Father. So at this time, I'm going to ask that you would stand and join me in prayer. Amen. Dear gracious God, we come to you right now with our heads and noble hearts. God, we thank you for being our creator. God, we thank you for being our all and all. We come this morning with thankful and grateful hearts for providing for us. Yes, God. Dear God, we thank you for life, health, and for strength this morning. God, we don't know where we would be without you. Thank you, Jesus. So right now, dear God, we bring our gifts unto you. Thank you, Jesus. You only require that we give you a tenth of what you've given us. Yes, God. And this morning, God, we come with our gifts. We thank you, God, for gift and giver. Thank you, Jesus. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, we can do that that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just want to encourage you to let you know that God will always be with you. Wherever you go, you will not be alone. He goes before you, and he's a defender behind you. No weapon for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
He goes before me. He goes before me. He's a defender behind me. Defender behind me. Yes, God. Hallelujah. I shall not fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup overflowing.
say that last time. Last time. Everybody go with me.
The contemporary English version calls it a trap, a dangerous trap. So our aim in this series is to learn how to not concentrate on the approval of others and concentrate on how we might approve and approve of my God. Yeah, yeah. Amen, church. Yeah, yeah. So when I left last week, I, first of all, I talked about trying to please everybody, cause to be the miss God's purpose on my life. Yeah. And then trying to please everyone keeps me from growing my faith. And then trying to please everyone leads me to sin. And today, trying to please everyone causes hypocrisy in my life. Ah, Jesus. Now, hypocrisy is trying to be something that you are not. Okay, okay, okay. You see, when hypocrisy invades our lives, we start to wear masks. Okay, now. <laughs> we become familiar, the counterpart who we really are. We adopt to our environment, and there are a few things as exhausting as trying to figure out what masks are going to wear today. In front of which people and in which context. And it, it is completely uh, and entirely exhausting. And God doesn't want us to spend our energy trying to please everybody by wearing a mask. Because there are far too much things that God has designed for you to do other than trying to wear a mask. Because when you wear a mask, you fake it, you pretend, you don't reveal your true self, you just love God. We just love to make ourselves look better than we are. And you know what? That's the claim to Facebook. Yeah. Why people post things about themselves the way they wish they were, but right. not the way they really are. All right. Or somebody say in here. Amen. In order to make themselves look better. Yeah. And you know what, friends? Jesus knew all about this tendency of the human heart long before Facebook because he spoke directly to it. In Luke 16 and 15, he said, you make yourselves look good in other people's eyes, but God knows your heart. Okay, now, let's go. You see, God wants you to be in harmony with him inside and out, regardless of who you are around, what contract you're in. God wants you to be congruent. God wants you to be credible. God wants you to be reliable. God wants you to be dependable. God wants you to be trustworthy. Not full of duplicity and wearing mad because the fear of disapproval will cause us to compromise things that are actually important in our lives, like the truth. They the truth. We say things that are socially acceptable rather than saying what's true. All right. You better talk about Alternative it. facts. That we say things that are politically correct rather than true. You see, church, integrity is more important than popularity. Repeat it. Integrity. Is more important than popularity. I believe God put those words in our daily prayer. It's a simple petition. Tell God, Father God, help me to help my integrity become more than my popularity. I want to have integrity. I don't care about popularity. Why? Because when I got integrity, I'm doing what's pleasing God. You brag about yourself, but the only approval that counts is the law of approval. Somebody say amen. amen. God's approval is the only approval that counts, and that's how you and I become harmonious. That's how we become consistent. That's how we become appropriate. That's how we become approvable. That's how we become suitable, and that's how we become congruent. 
It's only with God's faith uh -huh. that really matters. That's right. I'm going to it. I said, only what God said is what really matters. Because when we really see him, how you able to see him? See him. And look at what he's done for you. And realize how he sacrificed his only begotten son just for you. When you realize that, you can stop wearing the man. All right. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, the fifth reason that running around trying to please everybody. Uh -huh. The fifth reason we can find that the heart will trap is because it silences my witness. Yes, it does. Say, it silences, it silences my, witness. my witness. It silences my ability to share the simple truths of who Jesus is and how he has changed my life. Why? Because when we're pleasing everybody, we don't do this. Now, we find a story in the Bible that perfectly illustrates this in John 9, where Jesus rolls into town and he heals a man that had been born blind. And you would think that the moment uh, Jesus healed this man and he began to see that would be a wonderful prayer. And people all around would be shouting and declaring how good God is and how God has made a way. How is it going to roll out that way? Uh -huh. Because there were some religious leaders uh -huh, let's go. around and they go to this man's parents and they ask them what they think about where Jesus has healed their son and as opposed to shouting and praising and magnifying God, they said, go ask my son. Go ahead, Lord Jesus. Now the scriptures tell us that they did this because they were afraid of what the religious leaders were saying. So their witness was silence. And we actually find this unfortunate there all over the New Testament. In John 7, 13, it says, no one had the courage to speak favorably about Jesus in public. My God. They were afraid of getting in trouble with the media. Imagine that. 2,000 years ago, the idea of saying what was politically correct, uh, not to get under anyone's skin, was alive and well. Why Jesus had uh, done all kinds of miracles in people's lives, yet they were afraid to say thank you to you. Again, we find in John 12, many people that said, including the leaders, believed in Jesus. But they wouldn't talk about it politically out of fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. Yeah. And the last part is the kick. Because they love human approval yeah. more than they love the approval of God. Yeah. You see, sometimes shall silence is gold. Yeah. But in other cases, it's just cowardice. Yeah. Yeah. It's just straight character. The desire to fit in and teach a lot of us quiet. And you know what, Trey? I think about my own actions. And when I think about my own action, I ask myself a question. Who around me would hear more about Jesus if I wasn't afraid to share who he was? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I think, uh, but so that there were more, there would be more of us out there doing street ministry if we weren't afraid to share what God has done for us. That every day that he leads us and guides us and protects us, that every day he's got roof over our head, every day he puts food in our mouth, every day God protects us.
with people in my life. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. And why not Sherry Crow? More so with the people in my life. Well, we dealt with five reasons that trying to obsessively please others is a trap. First of all, trying to please others. Causes me to miss God's purpose in my life. Amen. It keeps me from growing my faith. Amen. It leads me to sin. Yeah. It causes hypocrisy in my life. Yeah. And it silences my witness. So what is the antidote? And if all of us are honest, ask yourself, are there times when I don't do the right thing because I'm worried about what other people uh-huh, go ahead now. Ask yourself, are there times where I do the wrong thing because I'm worried about what other people think? So what is the antidote to the approval addiction? In other words, how do I break free from the people pleaser trap? Well, the antidote is between your earlobes. That'll change the way you think. All right. Why the cause is all about your mind. Yeah. It's all in you. Yeah. Because when you have the fear of disapproval, when you have the fear of conflict, when you have the fear of rejection, when you're overly worried about what other people think, all kinds of crazy makers invade your life. All kinds of unrighteous people invade your life. And they will run over you. And they're going to dominate your life. And you're going to miss all of the good things that God has prepared for your life. The Bible says in Romans 12, these words. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, the way you change your life is to change your mind. The way you change your life is to change the way you think. Jesus said, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And I found out there are six truths that will change the way you think. One I want to talk about now and the other next time. Say your neighbor, even God can't please everybody. Right now, there are people who are praying for one baseball team to win or the next baseball team to win. So half of them are going to be disappointed because God can't please everybody. Right now, there are some people that are praying for rain and some people are praying for sunshine, but God only knows only half of those people will be satisfied because even God can't please everybody. And if God can't please everybody, only a fool would try to do what God can do. So if you think that you're going to please everybody at any time, there's no way. Right. Unfortunately, my friends, as you go through life, there are going to be people all around you that disapprove of you. Did you hear what I said? And the fact is that Jesus said, woe unto you. When all men speak well of. What does woe mean? Well, more. Woe means bad news. Because if everybody likes you, that's bad news. Why? Because it means you stand for nothing. You stand for anything. It means you're a chameleon. You're a cop out. You are a wet. You are wishing washer. Because if everybody likes you, you have no confidence. You have no belief because the moment you take a stand for something, somebody's going to start throwing rocks at you. Am I right about it? Jesus said, whoa, when people speak well of you. And let me tell you something, church. 
There's never going to be a time when everybody's going to speak well of you except at your funeral. You hear what I said? If then they will speak good stuff about my church because even God can't please everybody. everybody. Well, that's where I'm going to leave you today. God can't please everybody and you can't please everybody. You want to try to please the one that made you. Please the one that blesses you. Please the one that woke you up. Please the one that started you on the way. Please the one that got a heaven to put you in. Don't worry about the naysayers. Trust God. Believe God. Let your life on him and step out on it. Say it.
the representation of your body. Thank you, Jesus. In our hands and hope. Representation of the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, change it from a color to a spiritual you. Then when we have taken these elements, you will be closer to me and have a more abiding relationship with me. Yes, God. We ask these prayers in the marvelous and wonderful name of your son Jesus the Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus looked at the disciples and told them, this do in Thank remembrance you, of me. Thank Let you, us all be together. Amen. Amen. He took the cup. This represents my blood. Jack on the mission of sin. Thank you, Jesus. As often Jesus. as you do this, you so forth my death and suffering until I come again. Thank you, Jesus. This do. Bless your name, Jesus. In remembrance of me. Let us all drink together. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Jesus the Christ. Oh, how I love Jesus. 